So on a day on the bench, I have a non-working DC-58 Dyson vacuum. I knew this was going to be very similar to my wife's uh, DC-35 that I worked on over a year ago on a video. And the, the problem ended up being, of course, the battery. And the battery is very easily replaceable on the DC-35. But we do notice some differences on the DC-58. And it may be well known, but... One of the differences is, of course, the battery does not easily come out. The trigger feels really, really different. Um, we'll look into that a little more. Even though Juwan attachments seem to work interchangeably, we notice that our connectors will not allow for our powered attachments to be run from one to the other. So that is a difference. But they look pretty similar. Uh, the filter, of course... It's different on this one as compared to the DC-35 filter, but still a lot of similarities. But enough talk about the 35 today is about the DC-58 and what's going on with this one now. I bought it non-working. The only thing I've done is cleaned it up because as I go to take it apart, I didn't want to have dust all over my workbench and all over my tools. So I cleaned up as much as I could, but still non-working. So let's see what it's gonna take to get this thing going today. We do have a screw here. I guess this is for the battery. First one I've ever looked into, of course. We also have a screw here. Both of these look to be number one Phillips. At least number one Phillips is working okay. Oh, yep, there's the battery. So screw here, screw there. Charging plug is different, so I could not try to charge this battery, but I might have to look into that another way if it need be. We'll check the battery in just a minute. Uh, first of all, I wanna look, if you can see this is very unusual. The trigger, well, at least I'm surprised by it. The reason it feels kinda odd the trigger is just a lever, and we just have two stab contacts coming into the battery. And if we look here, this battery evidently has the power switch built in, which is something that many people may know. I had no idea that they were that different. Appears to be a T8. Torx bit here on the battery. So apparently after taking out that T8 Torx screw, now we have to separate this half. Probably very similar to the, um, the DC-35 battery. And of course, before I destroy this housing, I want to bring over my meter and go across my contacts and push the switch in. So either this battery is completely at zero or the switch is malfunctioned. I'm not sure at this point without getting into it. can see that clip on each side here and we're getting a start I want to use plastic tools as much as I can because I know the cells are going to be somewhere right there close we got one two three four snaps at least two more to go Oops. Well, one thing to be aware of, it's hard to pull, and when it does come loose, <laughs> it will take out the jack. A shame the jack didn't just slide out, but it didn't. Um, but we do see that this little tiny switch, 0.1 amp at 30 volts DC, so it does go to the board. So the board, then it outputs at the terminals. So that is not the load rated switch. So that does make sense. By the way, that's the extra clips I was missing on this one. The reason it snatched apart on me is I was having to overcome those clips there. So I didn't know those two were holding me back. I had all three on each side loose, and then it still held on hard with those two before it broke loose. 
we do have to overcome those clips and get this clear acrylic piece out. And there we go, there's our battery. So a couple things interesting about this little battery pack that, that might be interesting enough for the video. The first being this switch. It shows it being on the normally closed. They're not even using the normally open tab. You can see that on that little switch. And that is absolutely correct. It it does use the normally closed, so that's unusual. We have a 30 amp fuse here that is good. That 30 amp fuse is good. And I have peeled off some silicone. This silicone is really aggravating, especially since it's, uh, it's not a wise idea to use anything metal, of course, on a battery being powered up. So my fingernail has been about the best tool to pick away at this. So I did find the one item that looks like it could be a power device. And it says this is Q3. And it is a 1C030L. So if I look up 1C030L, it shows some availability for the component uh, for some Chinese suppliers' websites. But I have not had any luck with a data sheet. However, just looking at this being a common MOSFET, if we take our positive from our battery, it's going to go straight out. So our positive is just going straight out. It usually switches our negative, and our negative's coming up here. And we see that we are open there. So probably from here to, yep, here to the MOSFET, the tab, we're getting it. So more than likely, this is going to go to some of the center pins. Yep. The center two, the outside, like pin one. And pin four is probably going to be our gate because it does not show. So if we look at this little MOSFET across, we can just do it from here to here actually. Yep, there's our diode. So I think the MOSFET's good. The fuse is good. I, I definitely wanted to take a look inside of this battery and the battery wouldn't charge correctly, even though I don't have the correct charger. So maybe if we just give this battery a charge, we'll just see how to work. It's, it may just be that the battery is low enough that it wouldn't charge, and of course it wouldn't activate. I'm going to charge these cells up a little bit one at a time with my power supplies I've done on previous videos. Just um, you want to make sure you don't go above, of course, 4.2 volts, which I'm only going to go to like three and a half volts. And we want a current limit to about one amp, and just see if they'll take a charge and balance them out. And we'll be right back. Uh, by the way, these batteries, a lot of these are 1.9, 1.3. They're all around that area. So they have dropped below what a lithium-ion cell likes to go. You usually don't want to get them below 2.7 volts. LiPo is 3 volts. A lot of lithium-ion lets you get by with 2.7. If you go below 2.5, sometimes they don't recover. But since they're not zero, maybe we can recover these enough just for testing reasons. Back now, just starting on my first cell. I'm just clipping across our tabs here. I have a 3.5 volt limit set on the CV of my supply and a little over an amp on the current. So I'm just gonna let this run and we'll do the same thing to each of the six cells. So while the batteries are charging, we'll slide this over and bring the DC58 over. And some of you may be wondering or already thinking if the battery does the power control, what if we just put our 24 volts to the Dyson vacuum, will it actually run? So what I have here is a little over 20 volts on a fully charged Milwaukee M18 pack. And just simply going through a push button switch. And yes, it does work. So this is using 20 volts and just thought I would share that. That will make an interesting build to have an M18 
Milwaukee. Dyson, pretty interesting. I did mark on here, put some dummy marks for plus and minus. Since they were kind enough to mark it on the battery here, plus and minus. So, awesome. I guess the other thing that will be good on video, if we can actually take apart the Dyson vacuum itself. And there goes our end cap. And that's where um, 24 volts DC just comes up to power the board. Max level push button there. So it looks like if we untwist these wires, What, that's just a rubber boot. We do have a screw right here. Another Torx T8 it seems. Okay, the trigger mechanism comes out. Wow, look at there. That is pretty neat. All right, so the red and white wire just goes down. That's gonna go through our strips on this canister and go out to our, um, our powered attachments. That's really neat. Boy, that thing's tight. Those magnets are strong. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear that. Wow. Pretty impressive. So we marked on here plus and minus from the factory. That's awesome. So if we bring over, hit our plus, hit our minus here. Pretty sweet. Do the old myth buffer. I don't get enough views for that. Very impressive little brushless vacuum assembly there. So now I've, I brought all these cells up to about 3.4, 3.5 volts and they're holding good and balanced. So now I'm actually going across and I'm gonna to try to bring it up to around 24 volts fully charged and just see, see how it does. So back now this battery is charged up. We've got right at 25 volts. Very well balanced to so just be uh, boosting the pack back up and we still get 32 blinks. So the higher the number of blinks, according to one blog was uh, the battery issue. Of course, it's not even hooked up to the tool, but like less than a dozen blinks is usually motor related or vacuum related. And um, the higher the number of blinks, like above 12, has something to do with the, um, the battery aboard itself. So even after balancing these cells and charging this pack up, we're definitely still getting our red LED blink of death here. So I'm gonna continue to monitor this pack and um, see if there's something going on internally that this chip is picking up. But as of right now, I think I showed it on video earlier because I've done this several times. I went back and made sure 
They are very balanced in getting back. And I have started digging into these chips a little bit, but it's gonna be very time consuming. And I'm trying to be more aware of the length of the videos. Um, I know this is probably getting to be over 20 minutes looking inside of this Dyson and looking into the uh, battery pack. And and obviously if, um, if someone's having a similar issue replacing the pack, um, similar to what we did on the DC-35 in a previous video, replacing the pack is gonna take care of that. Um, I just, I was unaware that this pack had so much involved in the control of the actual Dyson. So that's pretty interesting. And of course, I always recommend like an Amazon aftermarket pack for the price of it compared to the original Dyson because it's about a third of the price typically. And it's something with this much age on it, it only makes sense if it works okay. So I'll try to have a link in the description below, a decent replacement battery for this if it helps. And other than the two screws you have to take off, it's not a hard battery to swap out. So, so hopefully you enjoyed this video today, looking inside of this DC-58 and the issues we've seen and, um, and how unique it is about how to run rear 20 to 24 volts straight to it. That brings me to the next video. So I would like you to vote down below if you did like this video, just comment below about which direction you'd like it to go from here. So would you like it to be more troubleshooting on this and seeing that we can possibly get this to work? Or, you know, a third of the $40 battery, is it not worth going more in depth on that? Would you rather see um, rigging up some kind of way to run this DC-58 on a Milwaukee battery? So if you find that to be interesting, please comment below. If you enjoyed this video today, please like share, subscribe, and thanks for watching.